You know, it's important not to idealize the past. The world during my childhood certainly wasn't perfect. The media we consumed at the time wasn't perfect either. But one thing I do remember is that children's shows were, broadly speaking, shows for children. They had childish themes and ideas and plots. The moral at the end of every story was always something like, sharing is good or learning is fun. And this all made a lot of sense. The show Blue's Clues was a little bit after my time. It debuted when I was in middle school, I think, if I remember correctly. But my younger siblings were uh, Blue's Clues fanatics. So I was exposed to the show a fair amount. During a typical episode, Blue, the cartoon dog, would decide that he wanted to, you know, make puppets out of construction paper or something. And then he discovered that his scissors are missing. And with the help of his human friend, Steve, and the children watching at home, Blue would search around the house for his scissors. And then he would eventually find the scissors. And that would be the end of the episode. Suspense, drama, sorrow, redemption, the show had it all. Or at least it had enough for the preschoolers in the audience. Those preschoolers, they don't need much from their entertainment. Innocent and simple should be the name of the game. And that's what many children's shows used to be. That's what Blue's Clues used to be. But not anymore. Like so many other forms of child entertainment, Blue's Clues went from looking for his scissors to this. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. This family has two mommies. They love each other so proudly. And they all go marching in the big parade. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah. Has two daddies, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Come on, friends! Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching three by three, hurrah, hurrah. These papas are non binary, they love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. Yes, a non-binary disabled dolphin. And I, I also, I hope you notice the uh, Black Lives Matter fist on the microphones. They really, they really jammed it all in there. Yes, that is a pride parade featured on a recent episode of the show Blue's Clues, a show which, again, is targeted specifically at children aged three to five. The person singing is a man named Andrew Levitt, who goes by Nina West when he's on stage as a drag queen. And uh, that's that's apparently not the first time that Blue's Clues has delved into LGBT propaganda. They recently released a video featuring young children talking about the different pride flags and what they mean. There are, of course, many pride flags that signify many different sexual proclivities. The parade segment we just watched goes on for a while, listing many of them, starting with gay and lesbian, and then, as you saw, disabled non-binary dolphins, and then uh, into trans and beyond. Let's watch a little more just to see how far this actually goes. Families marching six by six, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching six by six, hurrah, hurrah. Ace, by and pan, grown-ups, you see, can love each other so proudly. And they all go marching in the big parade. Oh, yeah! Ace, by and pan. Sound like the names of, you know, members of a boy band or something. But uh, no, ace, by and pan, because it's important that, that three-year-olds be taught about pansexuals. By the way, if you're wondering what ace means, I had to look that up. That's a term used for asexuals. Now, if you're wondering why asexuals, that is people who experience no sexual attraction at all, are included in a community of people who identify themselves by their attraction to other people, and why anyone would be proud of not being attracted to other humans anyway, well, that I can't really explain. All I can say is that the LGBT umbrella has become more like a mushroom growing and growing until it has reached now a point where it's defined not by what it is, but by what it isn't. The only similarity between an asexual, someone who isn't attracted to anybody, and a pansexual, someone who's attracted to everybody, is that neither are heterosexual. The point of pride for LGBT people these days seems to simply be that they aren't straight. It's not a gay pride parade. It's, it's a not straight parade. It's all about what you aren't. It's not really about what you are. Now, this is an important fact to keep in mind, especially as we enter into what has now been deemed Pride Month. It used to be, you know, 
you had a, a one part of a day, the Pride Parade, and then it was Pride Day, and then it was a week, and now it's Pride Month. Many corporation institutions, corporations and institutions will go out of their way this month, even more than they do every other month, to push this agenda onto the public and especially onto kids. Kellogg's, for example, recently unveiled a Pride cereal developed in association with the gay activist group GLAAD. Um, the marketing campaign declares that boxes are for cereal, not people. And on the side of the box, there's a list of pronouns with a couple of blank spaces so that kids can fill in their own pronouns if they want. Ironically, they say boxes are for cereal, not people, and then invite children to literally put themselves into a box. Indeed, the LGBT movement is all about boxes. It's all about obsessively identifying and labeling people. The last thing they want is for children to be free and unencumbered, able to explore the world, figure themselves out. From a very young age, they say to the kids, here are the labels. Now pick one for yourself and and assume an identity that coincides with it. Of course, they'll never be honest about any of this. The fact, the absolutely undeniable, indisputable fact, which is staring us right in the face, is that the cultural powers that be really desperately want your kid to be gay or trans or some variation thereof. And they are going to do what they can to make that happen. But they won't admit it. Instead, they'll tell you that all of this, pride parades and pansexuals, in schools, in, in shows for three-year-olds, non-binary pronouns on cereal boxes, etc. All of this is about inviting kids to be themselves, they'll say. It's about inviting uh, the three-year-olds who are already trans or gay or pansexual to simply come out and, and live their authentic truth. Now, if you're still buying that line, then you may be a hopeless case. I don't know what to tell you. I can't force oblivious people to use their brains if they've gotten so comfortable living without them. But for everybody else, the the truth should be clear by now. This, of course, has nothing to do with inviting kids to be who they are. There are no transgender three-year-olds or bisexual three-year-olds or pansexual three-year-olds. Three-year-olds are not concerned with expressing their sexual identities, mostly because they don't have a sexual identity at that age. They're concerned mostly with eating snacks and running around without their shoes on, and playing with their toys. If we wanted to help them live their truth, quote-unquote, that's the truth we would help them live. This hyper-sexualization, this this incessant propagandizing, is rather about introducing a new, quote, truth. It's about turning them into something that they would not otherwise be. And as we already covered, the identity that our most powerful cultural institutions want a child to adopt is a negative identity. The message to the child is simple. In a way, it's simple. Be what you want to be. Be who you want to be. But don't be straight. Don't be, quote, cisgender. Don't adopt any values or worldviews or ideas that your grandparents may have held. So be whoever you want to be, just not that. Here are your boxes. There are a lot of boxes. But you have to choose one and choose it early and find your identity and your purpose in it. That's the message. Though the people spreading that message will never be honest about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.